I'm Amy, sex educator, somatic sex and relationship coach, and sex shop owner. And I'm April, VP of an international high-end pleasure products company and boss queen sex toy mogul. We're best friends who make our own rules about who we are as sexual beings. With everything from how to be a badass in the bedroom to top tips for bringing your relationship to the next level, we have something just for you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com. Well, hello, everyone. Hi, everyone on 420. Happy 420. Recording on 420, but this will be out a little later. But right. just so you know, it's 420. But to all y'all Yo. stoners out there, we big know ups, what, big ups, smoke that joint, smoke that get blunt, it. get it, get it. Yeah, me like 15 years ago would have been partying. No, like 20. I've never been a 15. big weed smoker. I do smoke an occasional puff, puff pass. Like I'll be like, yeah, but I don't like to get super stoned. I get, I get itchy and it makes my boobs hurt. Really? Yeah, it's weird. Your boobs hurt. That is interesting. I mean, that's what happened to me yesterday. Maybe when they're I just smoked. craving a massage. A my boobs? boobs? A breast massage. I don't know, but I think it's just hormones. It's like effects. I don't know. Whatever. I have no actual real um, hypothesis as to why, but my body will start to kind of ache. I get a little twitchy. Uh, I love CBD. CBD is yeah. great. Like I've eat, I had CBD gummies and CBD creams, and I don't get weird on that. But that's more body and not a head. Well, it's also, it doesn't have the same psychotropic. Psychotropic? I don't know, but I'm going to go with it. Okay. <laughs> it's like a tropic effects. Yeah. Um, and we did an episode with Ashley Manta on oh, yeah. Manta. Can, can a sexual. Can a sexual. And she talks about the uh, benefits of CBD. So I can do that. Just the THC seems to have a negative effect on me. Day. So clearly we're not smoking the pot on this no, day. But we are the drinking the wine. Yeah, of course we're drinking wine. Why not? Wine. We if anybody wine. hasn't done so and you are into wine, uh, I would recommend going to marginswine.com and getting on their newsletter list. Their, is that what it's? Newsletter list? Yeah, newsletter. Yeah, uh, because it's a, if you've never heard of us talk about it before, they are, um, it's her, actually, her name's Megan Bell, and she's local Santa Cruz person that takes underrepresented grapes from underrepresented regions and makes these beautiful wines. And right now, she only has a couple different. Um, uh, San Giovese. Yeah, San Giovese. Good oh. job. And um, Chenin Blanc. But uh, she They're comes delicious. out with different kinds of, of sustainable um, They're, biodynamic. What you call raw wine, right? Raw it's raw, wine. Or natural, 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 natural wine, wine, which is essentially like as or- organic as wine can get. And even the wines that are saying organic aren't even that organic. No. So it's like it's clean. It's pure. It's woman owned and operated. You get like no hangover from it. I mean, if you drink probably a few bottles, <laughs> you, you could. April tested it. She yeah, says, I'll, I'll tell you fully. She, she drank two bottles, no hangover. Over three bottles, hangover. Hangover. Yeah. So, uh, but you do really uh, feel less of that like thirsty, dehydrated, dumb feeling that you feel after your uh, a wine night. So check out marginswine.com. You will thank us and you can thank us. Also, I'd like to give a couple quick announcements. Number one, if you've requested that we have a book or reference list, we've had a couple, I think, emails and requests for that for all the books and references that we talk about on podcasts. Um, we actually created a resource list on our website at shamelesssex.com. So if you go there, all of our uh, references or most of the ones that we refer to or um, people, uh, guest speakers and past episodes have referred to as well should be on there with links. Be sure to check that out. Number two, um, for the Instagram contest, we contacted the winners for the, to win the Atom Cock Ring by Hot Octopus. So you would have received that in your Instagram inbox. Number three, if you're in Santa Cruz, I am teaching this upcoming Sunday. That's May 6th of 2018 with Daniel Molner of Ecstatic Dance. He's an amazing teacher. I am honored to teach side by side with him. We're teaching a Tantra in Motion workshop where I bring the Tantra and he brings the contact in Improv uh, dance portion of it, and it is a experiential kind of juicy, sexy, sensual day long from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Be a lot of movement. You don't have to have any experience. It's a great uh, thing to come on your own um, and create new connections and just experience sensuality with your body in a very safe way. Close stays on. It's nothing too crazy. Or you can come as a couple too and just work with your partner if you like. 
Um, let's see. What other announcements did I have? Oh, our sound. We just found out that this new mobile recorder that we have is actually defective. We upgraded to the Zoom H6, and we just found out that it is defective, meaning we have to send it back soon. It has a little bit of a fuzzy sound. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? It's not as clear as our old H4, which was um, supposedly not as nice as this one. So we're going to send it back. Our sound should be up and running in a in pure clarity very, very soon. So thank you for being patient with us. And lastly, um, about that Tantra class, you can use the coupon code for Shameless Sex uh, on Pure Pleasure's website because that's where you sign up for it on Pure Pleasure's website. The workshop will be at the Santa Cruz Vets Hall in the upstairs room, um, but you can sign up through purepleasureshop.com. Use coupon code Shameless Sex. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Shameless PP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com, and you can get 15% off of that workshop as well. So that's all the announcements I have for today. This topic today is anal 101. I love talking about anal. And this is so special because April's finally had anal sex. When we first recorded this episode. Episode 10. Uh, episode 10. Uh, so many months ago, many moons ago, April had never had anal sex. And so it was essentially like me talk, talking about how to have anal. And now she has. So it'll be fun. She can chime in and talk about her experiences. And we're re-recording it, right. re-releasing it because episode 10, the sound was really poor in the terms of the quality. And it somehow isn't showing up. on. A, it's it's kind of just kind of messed up on a lot of the... Um, we're not sure. Yeah, There's, we're not. I've been... I've, I've, up, re, up, I've uploaded, re-uploaded. I've yeah. just... I've, and it still isn't It's fixing. like a glitch in the matrix. So it's it was meant to be that yeah. we re-record this episode and now that I can speak from first person experiences as well with my anal losing my anal virginity and my anal experience we actually had a really great question short but great question from a listener recently about anal and um, I actually thought it could be a good time just to address it because it's really good and quick question do you have quick easy access to it mm-hmm. okay. I do but we can go I'll into start it. and you can pull Let's it up. dive into okay. the episode for sure so <clears throat> this is your um, speed anal version 101 class <laughs> um, because but don't use speed in anal. Don't use this speed. This podcast will just be. Or and yeah, don't use <laughs> yeah, don't use methamphetamines or <laughs> and don't move fast. Because um, anal is designed to be slow, and uh, you want to be present for it. So, um, okay, so anal. First of all. Um, porn is the worst educator on anal. In porn, they just shove it in and they fuck fast and hard and they go in and out completely out of the orifice. They don't show them putting on lube. They don't show them warming the ass up, using sex toys to warm up the muscles, any of that stuff. And this is where most people are learning how to have anal sex. It's the worst educator. So a lot of people for their first experience, it's the person that's inserting it, their whatever, their phallus, their, their cock, their dildo into their ass, um, they just shove it right in the way that they do in porn. Or maybe they don't shove it really hard, but they just kind of force it in, and then it really hurts. So first rule, anal should not hurt. It can be uncomfortable and almost always will be. But it should be. be sharp pains. There no, should be none of that. No, because that, that means there's tearing. There's something going on there that you don't want to do, want to have happen. So it's all about, but we'll talk about the steps of making it so it, it doesn't hurt. And, that it, and of course, like I said, it will feel uncomfortable because you're working against an unconscious muscle, which is the anal sphincter muscles, which are your friend because they keep things inside of you that you want to keep inside of you. No anal leakage. We don't want anal leakage. Um, so, so, but yeah, you, when you work with the muscle and it starts to relax and open up, it will feel a little uncomfortable at, at first, but not painful. So it's really important for you to get clear on the distinction between what pain feels like and what discomfort feels like. Right. Discomfort for a little bit, like, you know, the first five minutes or so normal pain at any point, sharp pain, like April was saying, no, stop what you're doing, slow down or add more lube, which brings me to point two. The ass does not lubricate itself. It never has. It never will. If you are someone that has an ass that does, please come to Shameless Sex so we can study you because we would like to make our asses lubricate themselves as well. (laughs) You are a miracle child. Um, Always add lube. We are big fans, if you've listened to episodes in the past, of Uber Lube um, for all kinds of sex. But for anal, it's fabulous because it's silicone. It lasts a long time. It doesn't get sticky. You don't have to reapply a whole bunch of it. Um, it's, it's amazing. So get your Uber lube. If you ever plan on doing any anal, anal play, you have to have lube with you. There's like, even with fingers, have lube. Don't touch this part of the body without any lubricant. So go check out Uber lube. We have it at uh, pure pleasure. You can go to purepleasureshop.com and use the coupon code shameless sex PP in all caps and it will be there. 
or is it no shameless pp i think it's just shameless 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 pp, pp all, all caps. caps and then you get 15 percent off you have the sex question do you want to interrupt with that well no i just want to uh, i didn't mean to interrupt in a bad way by the way oh yeah no <laughs> <laughs> no i uh i will get to the it's a really quick and i believe easy question to answer uh but i do want to say that in regards to the porn that's out there that, and that's how I always related my experiences to anal because I tr- had tried anal sex, but it was so painful. Um, but those porn stars that are going straight into anal have been wearing massive butt plugs probably for a few hours before they're, before they shoot their scene. So remember, um, it's a great tool, actually a smaller butt plug. If you're a, a beginner or, um, something to warm up the butt. So when you're looking at porn, anal porn specifically, this is why their butt hole is all stretched out. The whole. The whole of the butt is all, it's not stretched out. It's actually just relaxed around this um, device. And that's what a butt plug is for. Yeah. People are like, I thought it was. I've, I've anal leakage. Yeah. yeah. The, I thought it was to plug up anal leakage. So, nope, not anal leakage. So this, <clears throat> so th- that being said, I just wanted to touch on the, uh, the whole the porn old. trick. The old porn trick of yeah. sticking something in your bum beforehand. Yeah. And anything that um, has uh, a, a like if you look at a butt plug, the reason it's anal safe as opposed to some of some dildos or um, s- certain vibrators out there will not be anal safe. They, yeah, the, the, the flange, plugs, right. yeah, the base. They have a stopper, yeah, a flare, kind of like a pacifier, base. exactly. Yeah, so it won't you won't swallow it. So, so anything anal has to have that base. If it does, like those little tiny bullet vibrators, do not put that no. near the ass because carrot, unlike don't the stick vagina, a up there. no carrots. You know the vaginal canal, it has an end. There's a cervix there that stops things, but the ass does not. It can go up into your colon and into your um, your intestines. And so you definitely don't want things like that to go in there. So, um, yeah, but we, re- we highly recommend using anal plugs. If you're trying to have penetrative anal sex, either with a dildo or a cock, um, we're big fans of using a plug before you lube it up, you slowly insert it in. And then once it's in, it just stays in there and it helps to relax the muscles and it feels really nice. It shouldn't be uncomfortable. The insertion part could be, uh, but once it's in, it should just feel kind of nice and like this feeling of fullness. And if you have a vaginal canal, when you have the anal plug and it actually presses in through the anal cavity into the vaginal canal, it can make the vaginal canal a little more tight. Not to create tightness like um, you have this really tight pussy, but it just pushes everything together so you feel more sensation. Pressure. Yeah. And also, so Fun Factory makes a great butt plug called the yeah. booty, and it's in three sizes. Um, if you look at that butt plug, it has a, kind of like almost like a thumb that points either up or down. Always insert butt plugs so it's facing up so it's pointing in like an towards up direction. your belly button exactly yeah and i really like their the one with the balls the what's the one the single one what's that one called b balls b balls but the single right. b balls uno or b balls yeah. uno yeah i like that one it has it's a great shape in terms of the way it sits between the cheeks the yeah. stopper part and then the ball itself is a nice thickness so that it will help you to relax the muscles because if you get something too tiny it the like, too thin it won't relax the muscles as much but it's not too big where it's like super scary yeah i like that one a lot there's a kit i think peer pleasure carries it too where you can get a small booty a medium booty and a large booty almost like a dot Dilator kit where it, when you kind of get more advanced in the anal realm, you could go Super to the anal. medium. And then when you want to get something bigger in there, you go to the large. Or you can just always use the small plug. But um, that has helped me get prepped for my yeah. anal play. And we don't recommend for anyone to ever use anything numbing for anal ever. No. Because then you can't feel if there is pain, you wouldn't feel the pain. And that means that you could get some damage. This is when people do get things like yeah. anal leakage or anal tears. Um, also, if you get fissures. tears, fissures, yeah. you're more likely to get an STD and STI when you get tears. I think in, with anal in general, um, you are 18 times more likely to get an STD, STI from anal than vaginal sex because it's not self-lubricating and the skin's not as elastic. So that's just something to keep in mind for your safer sex practices. If you're having anal with someone that you're not fluid bonded, meaning you don't have an agreement to share fluids, you're not tested or whatever that is, you might want to be a little more cautious with anal than, um, well, be cautious in general, but you get to choose. Like anal is definitely, um, you're more likely to get things. Right. Yeah. That's completely true. And try not to go ass to vag. Oh, definitely not. <laughs> Yeast infection. I was just watching uh, my taxi cab porn that I always watch. She loves taxi and cab And they were porn. going ass to vag. And she's like, oh, you're so dirty, aren't you? He's was like, she British? Oh, oh yeah. It's oh, British. Nice. It's all oh, British. It's all British. Yeah, it's always British. <laughs> that's funny. Where you go? No, that's what they say in the beginning. Yeah. So, I mean, the <laughs> ass, even if you clean the ass before, even if you did like a douche or an enema or something like that, um, you there's still bacteria that in there. And when you introduce that bacteria to a vaginal canal, it 
that can totally cause a yeast infection. So um, this is why I recommend using uh, gloves or we have those finger cots that yeah. look like mini condoms. I mean, even when you're using hands on the ass, you ever have that moment, April, where someone touches your ass and then they forget what hand they use and uh-huh. then they touch your face. Like, which hand did you use? Yeah. Like, I think it's this one. I actually call them out. I'm like, did you just use that hand yeah. in the butthole? And then you just went, uh, no, yeah. no, no, go, go wash, wash your hand. Yeah. And then I do. I say that. I'm like, yeah. you have to go wash your hand. Because it's that easy. I'm not trying to get BV or a yeast infection. No. That's like my shit it's that I'm going to have fun. to deal with for like a week. And we, I, we just had April's yeast anniversary, by the way. Yeah. It was her one Thank year anniversary for her first and last yeast infection. Hopefully forever. <laughs> <laughs> Unless someone goes, ask to batch, and then you're screwed. Yeah, dude. I was just itching that my vagina, well, my vulva. Vulva. That, I didn't realize how gnarly that yeast it was, infections were well, like you feeling don't, yeah. wise they're just like itchy it's not fun and it's like you just like feel like a dog like with has worms like you want to scoot on the rug like eh. that's how i felt i really could have so i'm hoping that never happens again i do apple yeah. cider vinegar on a regular and i feel like that is alkaline my alkalining my system and i feel great so so if you uh don't want to deal with that i don't know what hand i use you can put finger cots on your finger you can put layers of them too so say i had three layers of finger cots on my fingers so it's like a condom you can't do this with on dicks by the way you can't put layers of condoms but on my finger, I put three layers of finger cots and I touch the ass. I pull one layer off. Now I go to vag. Then I go back to ass, pull another layer off, go back to vag. Hmm. And it just makes it so that you have control and you don't have to wash your hands in between. And you can do that with gloves as well. Latex or non-latex gloves if you have allergies too. There you go. Not a cotton glove though. That's not as comfortable. No, it's <laughs> definitely porous as well. <laughs> That's not going to work. Velvet? Can we use velvet? Velvet. Yeah, velvet. Ooh, look. Okay, so we talked about some rules there. Always use lube. Um, we talked about the stopper for anything that goes in the ass for anal safety. Um, we also talked about uh, porn star ass not shoving it in. Okay. So oh, a, anal yeah. beads, though. Anal beads are great. Anal beads are really nice. Yeah, and they don't have to be super long strands. The thing about the anal beads is they're, it's all about the sensation that they give on the anus when you both insert them, but more so when you pull them out and not like a chainsaw, not like, Rawr, but slowly, 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 and you pull them out right before during orgasm and it can enhance the orgasm because you have a lot of nerve endings on the anus. You don't have a lot of nerve endings in the anal canal or in the rectum. Most of the nerve endings are external, just like a vulva, right? All the, ex- the nerve endings or a lot of them are external. They're not internal. Um, so that's what those things do. Right. And I, I recommend, um, just because if you think about it, it seems scientifically more sound as well to get some, uh, an anal beads that are flexible. So meaning like made from silicone body safe, but that will contour with your body. So when you're inserting them into your body, cause there's a lot of hard plastic anal yeah. beads out there, or if they have connective little, um, the, the bits connecting the balls are made from, um, a porous material, like any kind of cotton I've seen so many different or plastics I would recommend going with all silicone smaller in between and something that has flex to it and again because I've worked for fun factory for so long I do have access to a lot of their anal beads and they made two different kinds and they were both great one was called flexi felix with a little face at the end it has a face I actually gave it to my friend's son that was teething and he would chew chew on it 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 never went in an ass it never went in a butt just so you all know I mean, it was just hilarious. I, she sent me a picture, my, my, my girlfriend back in the day, this is a few years ago, of him chewing on it. And I was like, well, it's a perfect teething toy, too. Or a dog um, chew toy. A dog. Or a dog chew toy. But it's cute enough to, to actually, n- no one would know the difference that it w- were from, um, you know, anal anal orientation. Well, those materials too. So for anything anal, you want it to be non-porous. So those are like high grade silicone materials. They don't hold in any bacteria. If you had something that was like a cloth material, like those anal beads have strings in the middle or rubber jelly things, those all hold in bacteria. And so every time you reinsert it, you're introducing old bacteria. You don't want to do that. You want silicone or stainless steel. That's why Fun Factory makes this. They have German silicone and they make, and they're affordable. I think they're $35 yeah. for the anal beads. So it's not a huge investment and they're good materials. There's Flexi Felix and Bendy Beads were the two that they manufactured when I worked there and I believe they still make them. So check them out. You probably have them at Pure Pleasure. We have them at Pure Pleasure. Yeah. yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah, we have all of them. So, and and if your ass doesn't like it, it can be a dog chew toy or for a baby. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. If you're like, meh, if, and with medical grade silicone, you can yeah. clean and then it can be reused. Honestly, it can work out well. And size-wise, um, you know, the ass can stretch out a lot. Like, people do anal, anal fisting. fisting. Yeah. And we're not going to talk a lot about that because we actually personally aren't experts on that. Um, but the, when you think about it, with enough time and breath and lube, you can get some pretty big things in the ass. So mm-hmm. when you see those huge butt plugs, you're like, oh, that would be way, way too big. 
your ass could fit it if you were open to it and you spent like two hours, you know, it's possible. Um, but the keys here really are taking your time. And we talked about this on episode 10, but I'll do the, talk about this kind of levels all over again. And then April can share more about um, her recent anal virginity story. Uh, <laughs> the way that I describe when I, when I teach anal sex, and it's one of my favorite things to teach because people are so uneducated on it or, or uh, improperly educated on it based on porn, um, is aside from everything else we already said before with the lube and all that, um, is that the person that's being penetrated they're the ones that get to control the penetration. So porn always shows the person being penetrated on the bottom. They're like in a doggy style position or something. And that is not the most pleasurable way to have anal because it, the, it's just the person on top should have control over what's happening. In my opinion, it'll just make things more comfortable because they can take their time making their way onto the cock or dildo versus someone else penetrating them and not knowing how what's too much and too fast or too hard. So... My favorite anal scenario would be that you're playing with your partner. You've decided that it's anal sex night. Anal sex is not designed for quickies. It's not like we have five minutes. Let's have anal. It's designed for we have some time. And so it's anal sex night. We're playing. Okay, we're going to have anal sex. Let's get out the butt plug. So you get out the, what is it? The booty. Or what was the other one that I like? The B-balls. B-balls. B-balls uno. B-balls uno or the booty that you can get at Pure Pleasure. They're from Fun Factory. You lube them up. When you're putting this toy in, you put it in so slowly, it might even take you like three minutes to get the, the toy in. You don't force anything against the muscle. So you're pressing very lightly and you're pressing and you'll just feel the muscle slowly open up over the toy. If you want to be even more awesome, use a finger first, a well lube finger and just kind of work your way up with sizes. So starting with a well lube finger and slowly inserting in, like literally taking like 60 minutes, 60 seconds to, you know, two minutes before the whole finger is in. Um, and, and, and same with the toy, just take your time. And then, and, and if you have a partner inserting in you, like give them feedback slower or add more lube or whatever. If you, again, if you're feeling pain, stop what you're doing, add more lube or slow down. Uh, but just really listen to the body and let the body take whatever it's receiving in without forcing it. Um, another thing there, too, that you see in porn is this in and out thing, right? Like the cock's in, out, in, out. When the ass isn't well warmed up, um, every time you pull something out of it, it has to reopen again when you put something in it. And then it feels uncomfortable again. So whatever you insert in there, say I put my finger in April's ass. <laughs> you like that hey. visual? Hey, how's it feel, April? Oh, it feels nice. I, re- I took my time. Slowly, it's really loop. slowly. Deep breaths. And ah. April's taking deep breaths as I insert something And I did in not it. eat a big Indian meal beforehand. Thank God. <laughs> Last time when she did and we had <laughs> anal, it was terrible. <laughs> big old mess. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. We'll talk about that part too in a little bit, the poop part. Um, but okay. So when you have your finger in, don't pull it in and out, keep it in. And maybe you can do like a little microscopic back and forth motion, but more so it's more circular. It's like circular to open up the muscles a little bit. But if you pulled it out right away, the ass muscles would close and just be annoying to uh, relax them again. But say you did have the finger in for five minutes. Okay. Now I'm going to do the toy. Well, lube toy. We slowly insert the toy and now the toy's in and it feels really comfortable. And now we just play, do other things. You know, we make an out sucking cocks or whatever we're doing. Whoever's present, we don't know what we're doing. We're playing. Maybe we're doing some like furry play. I'm in a bunny suit. April's <laughs> unicorn suit. April's a unicorn. And, um, and then we decide, okay, now it's time to penetrate. We're ready for that. Slowly remove the anal plug and then lube up the sex toy, you know, the dildo or the homegrown cock. And then the person wearing the sex toy or who owns the homegrown cock, they lay down on their back. They're completely laying down on the back. The person that's being penetrated, they not only lube the cock or the dildo, but they lube their own ass too. So add some lube there. They, they hunch, not hunch, that's the wrong word, crouch. Yeah, crouch. crouch over. In so like it's like the it's, goddess position. It's like a missionary position but with your body. It's like a um in a perpendicular, right? Like an L shape. Yeah. So your body is kind of like your your hunched crouch crouched over them. And and they're laying down the person with a homegrown cock or the penis and you slowly make homegrown your way cock or a dildo? Or dildo, that's what I meant. Yeah, <laughs> or penis, that's confusing. <laughs> you slowly make your way onto the phallus. And in this, you take your time. This is because this is a larger object that you're inserting. Take deep breaths, take your time, and you get to make your way on. And get, this could take five minutes until you, you're slowly creeping your way down. You're still creepy, creeping your way down on. And, and then finally, it's all the way in after maybe like five minutes or so. Maybe it's three minutes if you're lucky. 
And then you only do the movement. You as the receiver, the person on the bottom, they don't get to move until you say, okay, my ass is fully relaxed. Now you can move. And one thing I like to do when people on the bottom move, I like to, as I'm on top of them, I like to press their shoulders down and say, don't you fucking move. And they're like, oh my God, so hot. She's so dominant. I'm like not dominant at all, but that's my one dominant moment. You just you push them back. I push them back. I'm it's it's consensual pushing. <laughs> <laughs> I got consent now. So as as you on top now, you're just in, so you're not going to go hop up and down like bunnies like you see in porn. You don't want to pull the cock or the the dildo all the way out. You just kind of do like a very light movement or maybe more like a grinding. You know, like a grinding of the pelvis, which in my opinion is what most orifices orifices like more. Anyways. And you do that for a while, and what you'll notice is you'll you'll notice that the ass will open up eventually. It will relax. All of a sudden, all the discomfort went away. There's a lot more room to move. Like, it feels like it opened up. When that happens, then the person that is, is penetrating you, then they can start moving. So then you can say, okay, now you can start thrusting or moving your hips or whatever you're doing. Okay, now we can switch positions, and now we can be in a, a doggy style position or whatever. But this is probably more like 15 minutes into the game where you've really taken your time to open it up and relax. And so in this, there was no pain. There's just deep breaths, a lot of lube, a lot of going slow, a lot of checking in with your partner um, and taking care of yourself as the receiver as well. Some people have asked me as for the person being that is penetrating if they have a homegrown cock. Um, if there's not a lot of movement happening, what if the cock goes soft? Um there's the other things you can do. Play with their balls if they have balls. You know, play with nipples, make out, um, you know, whatever. Start touching yourself in front of them to turn them on. There's ways that, that they can still keep the hardness there um, as you do your jam. Use a little vibrator. Use a vibrator, yeah. yeah. On, use a vibrator on them, yeah, totally, yeah. So this is my go-to. Like Every time I have anal, I do it this way because I have control over my ass being penetrated. I never feel pain. It, my partner loves it because I'm taking control and they get to receive that for a little bit because I'm usually not the dominant one. And I have really awesome, pleasurable anal sex. April, tell us about your recent anal adventures because I told you that this is how... this. I mean, I've talk, talked to you about this, this way of having anal sex. So I've only had anal twice since th- this year. Woo! Since, But that's... I mean, January 14th, I lost my anal virginity. Oh, yeah, we have put it in our shared calendar. <laughs> yeah, I know we should. I think didn't, I think we did. You, I think you did, yeah. I think you added it. Thank you for that. I will remember it mm-hmm. forever. Um, and I do. I did have this whole little kit set up where I had like... Like her, her anal weekend getaway? Yes, and I didn't end up using it. But it What was in it, though? What was in it? It was a pair of underwear that could be tied in a bow in the back. Ooh. So it was like really cute little underwear. And then a bottle of Uber Lube. And then a butt plug. And then I think there was some of that clitoral, which I don't really love. I don't know why I put it in there, but that clitoral gel that you put on. That like makes on your, that brand? Um, maybe. Like I don't, warming? It's like a warming it's or like tingling? It's like a warming yeah. tingling because yeah. I figured like maybe then I could get additional stimulation um, with just using my hand on the yeah. clitoris mm-hmm. if that came about. But I didn't end up using the kit. And what happened was I really wanted my partner just to kind of Go take for charge yeah. so he did and it was during the day like fully sober midday? day yeah that's like as good as my burning man anal story but yeah, I like I midday anal. it was like in the morning and then he bought a new car later that afternoon that was a good day <laughs> <laughs> it was the same day um and so we uh, he actually so i love being tied up and i love this hog tie thing that i have that has like wrists and binds wrists and ankles together and then the middle has like this center piece that you can kind of grab. It's great for doggy style, but I'd never use it for anal. And it kind of got in the way for anal, so I don't recommend it. But he tied me up with that thing and then put a bunch of lube in my butt and then went slowly, slowly, slowly. But it was really hot because I was like, I think I was blindfolded too. Now it's like been four, how many, what, how many months? Four or five months, so I can't remember. Huh? But it was super hot. So, so, you, so you, you did all the so things. So I was like, in the doggy time. style yeah. position. Yeah. But he was slowly. Um, slow, yeah. It was all very slow. And then once it got in, like what you had mentioned, where you can kind of feel. So it was uncomfortable. I was yeah. like, but it didn't hurt. Yeah. But it, it w- there was a moment where I was like, oh, my God, I don't know. It's if a I lot. Can do this. It's a lot. It's a yeah. lot. But I just kind of breathed through yeah, it and deep just breaths. took my time with it. And it, it did the whole process before we could kind of fully like kind of move with each other. Yeah, was, you don't really get to move a lot no, for a while. No, yeah. it was probably six to eight minutes. I don't even know. We should set a timer next time. <laughs> I know. I, I don't recall. But, and then do like a research study. But it was really hot. And I like, I pretty much 
and really enjoy. I use the vibrator. Um, I use my magic wand on the on my on the clip at the same time. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. So I try to prop it up because my hands were bound, so it was like kind of propped. Like wow, sitting. there's a lot going there's on. So much going on, <laughs> which I I love. Awesome. Um, so. That was the first time. The second time I did the on top where I was in the crouch, like oh. kind of goddess position in yoga. You know, they call it the goddess squat. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, totally. Squatting. S- squatting is so, the word. Squatting. squatting crouching, not, squatting. Not hunching, not crouching. Yeah, squatting. Yeah. So it was on that couch right there, the green couch. I see snail trails. <laughs> <laughs> and it was nighttime and I had a little bit more to drink. So I took charge. And again, it was the slow process, but... Um, I fully had a vaginal orgasm from anal. From anal. Yeah, you can have. I did indirect... use my hand a lot as well, but it was great. It yeah. was like really spicy and hot and really fun. Um, and that time I had full control and full, like the vision of him, as it was pretty hot. Like, yeah. Well, the, the thing about anal is there's like some there's some taboo to it. You know, it's a sodomy. It's so ancient, and so bad. Yeah. Um, but the thing about anal is like it's the universal orifice. Everyone has an ass. And people who have prostates, you know, male body folks, and we have an episode on prostate pleasure that was done shortly after Anal 101. Mm-hmm. It's with uh, Prostate Pleasure with Charlie Glickman. We're not going to talk a lot about that here, so go back to that if you want to learn about prostates. But, you know, male body folks have even more pleasure possible through anal because of the prostate. But it's it's totally it's totally a pleasurable experience for a lot of people if they're doing it right. Right. I want to do the the... I want to do both of those things again. I don't know why we haven't. I feel like because it, take, it takes a lot. It takes a lot, and um, it's just a busy, busy time for both of us in our lives right now. And yeah, so, anal's a planning thing. It's a planning thing, um, or like or like a gift. But I have said, I'm like, hey, you want to do a little anal night soon? And he's like, fuck well, yeah. So a now. Anal. You want to sell some anal? Would you like some anal? Is it anal? Is it time for can, some anal? Can we talk about this question though? Really, yeah. it's a really read quick it, question. It. I think it's it, it's a good one. So this is from. Um, Sam. Hey, Sam. So my question is about anal. I just cannot get the asshole open. We are going super, super slow, using tons of lube, and I'm genuinely trying to relax. I just won't open up. The finger, the first finger is good, but anything bigger than that, and my butt burns. Any advice? Thanks, ladies. Okay, I want to ask this person, can you poop? Because if you can poop, you can get more than a finger in there. Like, whatever can come out, you can get something in. I put some basic coconuts out before, so my ass knows shit could come out. You come and, in. and go and in. Go yeah. in. <laughs> but you're working with the unconscious muscles. So, um, but yeah, so I like that this person, so they're not forcing anything. So I like that. Like I, I, I'm stoked that this person is just taking their time and it's feeling like it's hard, but yeah, butt plug. I think a butt plug. Yeah. So go with the butt plug and just lube and take your time. Add the deep breaths and maybe try to bring in some other things that pleasure you like I don't know if you have a clitoris, Sam, because I didn't figure out who what their what their body is. Not sure either. So if you whatever, if you have penis or clitoris, play with your genitals as well. Like do other things to relax or get turned on and get more aroused. The other thing that um is is helpful is if you bear down. So as you're being inserted into, it sounds counterintuitive, but if you pushed out your genitals as if you were trying to poop. Like bear down almost. Bear down. It opens up the ass. So mm-hmm. as you're inserting, bear down a little bit, and it can actually open it up a little bit more. My my thing um, that I would suggest as well, which we, we talked about is butt plugs, but um, yeah. exactly kind of using uh, – take two hours beforehand maybe and and wear that butt plug, and then that will yeah. really relax. Wear it around, rocking around. around. And try yeah. the booty, um, Sam, if you're out there. The booty is really comfortable. It's soft and flexible, the booty – butt plug that we talked about from fun factory and it has that crescent shaped stopper that fits between the cheeks you can actually sit down on it it's comfortable it contours with your body and it'll prep you for that and it granted the size of it is probably about two average to small size fingers if you want something bigger perhaps your partner has a bigger device that they're sticking inside of you i don't know um like bigger device or genital or whatever they're putting inside of you if you want something bigger Go with a bigger butt plug, but remember that's going to take you more time to relax around that. So that I think yeah. is the best advice possible. Yeah, because they already said they're going super slow, so I'm not exactly sure. And, um, and I wonder what they're using to insert. Like, is it a? I, I don't know. If you're dealing with a penis, and there, you can get anything in there, right? Mm-hmm. So, but I will say that people who have huge cocks probably don't get to have a lot of anal especially yeah because it's a lot of work i mean it meaning it's definitely doable it can still be pleasurable and fun but it's a lot of work yeah. it's a lot of time like how much time do we have for your huge cock and so you hear that from people with huge dicks like i don't really i've never had anal or yeah. most people won't even try anal with me and i'm like well 
it's because they don't have the time. Yeah, and, they don't, and they also just don't know I think that it's most possible. of my my um, friends that are power bottoms. Power bottom, um, which is it's like it's my super bottom. Very, it's very common in the gay community to uh, be a power bottom or a power top. You're like topping from the bottom, you mean? Like, uh, like power bottom is power the, bottom. Usually, is they can take a, a lot. Oh, huge. Uh, okay, huge, huge cocks. I like that. So it's a. Uh, I have had some friends in, when I lived in L.A. that were like, "Oh, I'm a power bottom," and I'm like, "Damn." I want. Yeah, they should teach anal. Tell me more. <laughs> Yeah. So and yeah, I um, I love gay porn. I know, me too. It's I just because I awesome. I think I love anal porn in general. Like if I were to watch porn, I don't watch a lot of porn these days. But if I did, it would have to be anal porn. And whenever I watch gay porn, I'm just so into it. Yeah, I'm just into the taxi cab thing still. Is there any anal in there? Yeah, dude, they do all anal of it. in the taxi cab. Yeah, it's a big old London taxi, old school London taxi. I need to go to London. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna be there in August. Okay, I'll come there with you. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so let's talk about poop. Okay, poop. Poop, everyone. So, <clears throat> poop. It happens. It shit happens. happens. Shit happens. Shit fucking happens. If you're going to play in the mud, you might get dirty. Just yeah. so you know. But it doesn't have to happen as much as you think with anal. It's, it's not actually, actually less likely to yes. happen, less common than people think. I've so only had like, there's like a smell. We call them like traces. Yeah, but like, it's nothing yeah. that I did it on my couch and my couch is precious. Ah, I see a smell trail. <laughs> <laughs> That's from my bed. Okay. Um, so, okay. Feces is not stored in the rectum, and when you're having anal sex, either with fingers, a sex toy, or a cock, you're only going in the anal canal in the rectum. That's not where it's stored. Now, when you have the feeling of needing to poop, the poop is now moved to the rectum, mm-hmm. and so at that moment, yes, you do have feces it in the rectum. It goes from colon. It's just yeah, colon. It's intestines and gets, yeah. to colon. There's like three or four layers of the colon. And then when your body's ready to eliminate waste, then, then it's, it's in the rectum. Right. And it's like time for you to go poop. If you're in that time, don't have anal you sex. You have a turtle head poking out. Don't have anal Probably sex. Probably not good. Yeah. A prairie dog with a peanut? <laughs> Oh God, that's good. Yeah, just wait for that that thing to happen for your bowel movement to go. I have your bowel movement. And if you are planning an anal evening, just don't eat a lot of food beforehand. Well, most really, so if you eat a lot of food, like say you're having an anal evening and you eat food, you know, an hour beforehand, it's gonna take a long time for it to make it to your intestines. My friend, my friend, he was cooking dinner. He um, enjoys the uh, the anal, the anal, <laughs> um, and. I was like, he's like, can you tell me what to make about Whole Foods? What should I make? So I was giving him, I was like, oh, get those Brussels sprouts, get some broccoli. Oh. He's like, oh, girl, what? He's <laughs> like, no, I'm going, I, I am I'm meeting my tonight. friend tonight. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, you're right. I didn't think carrots go with carrots. So no gassy food. No, don't yeah. do gassy Because it's, if you eat, so say you eat dinner at seven and then you have anal sex at 10, that food probably hasn't made it to your intestines and your, like, or not into your intestines, but your colon and your rectum by that point, unless right. you have a really fast metabolism. It's like 12 hours so usually. So it's a process. But yeah, no gassy food. Foods. No, stay, stay away from beans and 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 all the Indian food and yeah, things like that things. are harder for your body to sort of process. I just recommend lighter foods or morning time after you pee or what. So poop. if you're, but I will say yeah, if you're a morning pooper, morning anal sex is not your thing unless yeah. it's like an hour or two after. Yeah, because the other thing is when you poop, sometimes there's still stuff that needs to like make its way in your body. Um, so I wouldn't say like go poop and then have anal sex like right away after. But and chances use some are, wipes to clean. Like, yeah, use, wet wipes or take a shower and you take a soapy finger and just go in the anal canal yeah. a little bit and clean it out. Give yourself a little bit of a bidet action in the shower. Stick that shower hose. What is that called? Shower head. Shower head up there in yeah. there. Get it all cleaned up. Yeah, and, and then there's a device called what the sh- the shower jerk. So what is it called? Shower, shower, shower jerk? I have no idea. It's an anal douching device that you oh. could a- actually put on. If you're really into like making sure your bum is I clean. I know, but this, but this is the, the sh- uses the pressure of the shower mm-hmm. to shoot the water up your ass. Right. I've used those before. Yeah. Not shower jerk though. I've I never used that brand. That. Stream Master, but they don't make. Stream Master. They don't make them anymore? Well, maybe they do. But it, Stream Master was an old brand and then it switched to a new brand. We, I think we have them at Pure Pleasure, but it's different than the enemas that you see at the drugstore. Those ones you just fill with water and you have to wait. It's like a slow drip IV into your ass. Um, but these ones you hook up to the shower. It uses the pressure it's of like the shower a colonics. water. And it only takes like one minute. You have just... you had a colonics before? No. So I've had one in Bali when I was in Bali for a while. And a Balinese colonics. It was great because you do a, a bit of a juice cleanse before. And so if you were big into eating a lot of red meat and oh, yeah, you rice that thing. and carbohydrates, a lot of that sticks inside your colon. It's like little bits. It lo- almost looks like bits of rice because you can actually see what's coming out of you. It's amazing they've done it for thousands of years really clonics have been done it's to clean out your um your your inside 
bowels. I mean, all of it. So highly effective, but it's, it, I think the shower device is almost like that, but colonics, you're, you're actually working, um, towards cleansing out all the, the solid food out of your system prior to that. And then the actual, they inject the, the water into your bum and then they push into it. Your and bum. It, all of it comes out. So if you're a big red meat eater, look into a colonic treatment. It's well, and if, and if you're doing some deep anal, then using the enemas that you, that go, cause enemas, they go into your colon mm. douching. You can buy these little douching things that don't get the ones at CVS or sorry, I just named a brand, whatever <laughs> your drug store, the pharmacy, the pharmacy, <laughs> your drug store that has, um, already has, um, the what is the I just forgot the word saline not no you want saline it's the other one the laxative anything oh, that's a laxative, laxative dump that out and don't use that you don't want to use that you just want never to, use laxative people they're no. really hard on your It'll system shred the inside it will you. and people actually you you can end up with a colostomy bag and it's really gnarly yeah don't use those but you do want to put a little bit of saline in it or just a little bit of salt because that will help it so that your body doesn't absorb the that's fluid what it's in a colonics treatment yeah exactly a little bit of saline or salt and then and so if the, the enema bags, you would use that for like a deep cleaning. If you're going to do deep anal, if you're just doing some regular like shallow anal or light anal, or even with anal penetration, even with a cock or a dildo, but you're not trying to like heavy thrusting and maybe anal fisting or whatever you're into, um, then you can just use uh, one of the anal douches, which is just a little squeezy bottle that you squeeze and oh, shoot yeah. it in there. It looks like those th- thermometers that they yeah. give to Yeah, they're funny. Yeah. <laughs> and then it just, you just expel it out. Well, yeah. Uh, books for anal? Are there uh, good some good yeah, some so good books? I can't talk anymore. Great books. Good books um, for anal. Okay, so, yeah. um, me cavemen. Me <laughs> April. Me cavemen. I have th- uh, three recommendations. One for just anal. There's um the Ultimate Guide series. So Ultimate Guide for Anal oh, Sex for Women yeah. and Ultimate Guide for Anal Sex for Men. Um, these are great books. We have them at Pure Pleasure as well. For prostate, it's the Ultimate Guide to Prostate Pleasure, which is written by Charlie Glickman and another woman that I don't remember her name. I love though Tristan Termino's DVD on mm. how to have anal sex because it's like a hot porn and a book in one. There you go. We have that at Pure Pleasure as well. You can probably well. download it too, or can you get it on Pure Pleasure site? Yeah, I think if you went, yeah, if you went and looked up, is it um, God, just look up anal and it should come up. I'm trying to remember the name or tri- look up Tristan. You mean and, Anal? Anal. Look up on now. Look up on now. Yeah, Tristan or anal, but it's a great DVD. It's one of my favorite instructional DVDs because I like anal, but you also get to learn how to do it. There was a saying in Hebrew when I lived in um, Israel that was like, I'm going to kick your ass, but it was like, I'm going to open your ass. And I'm like, for <laughs> <"Anal?" laughs> That is I can't remember scary. how to say it now. Yeah. Like, shefet to shefet. Something like that. And I was like, what does that mean? I'm going to open your ass. I was like, oh, we're just playing ping pong. I don't like this game. Damn it. Is this like getting STD in cave? Yes. Yes. Almost. We heard that from someone in Israel once. Yeah, we did. I heard you get STD in cave. <laughs> <laughs> we're the Bedouins. That's what they told us. Yep. All right. So, so yeah. I'm sure there's some things that we missed, but this was I think anal the power. the takeaways, though, if we had like Slow two it down. minutes yeah. to say what the top things about anal are. Um, slow it down. To slow it down. Use anal plugs or beads to help relax. Lube. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Things that, you know, toys that have a flange or a base on there. Always. Bear down when you're inserting something. Take your time. Time, time, time. Yeah. Plan lube, it lube, out. Lube. Yep. And then, and just listen, listen to the body. The body knows in anal sex should never be painful. Never, and ever. It may be uncomfortable, but it should never be painful. Voila! Anal power hour. Yeah! Yeah, everyone, your homework, go have some awesome anal. Yeah, and you know what? Don't discount the anal, even if it's the morning. Do it anytime. Except for if you have to poop. Not I've, a good time. <laughs> I've been thinking lately. I tried to shave my butthole today. With a razor? Yeah, it was dangerous. You need to I use an electric razor. I'm pretty sure razor I cut it oh, a little bit. Oh, God. And I was like, ah! Yeah, maybe I should bend over. You should help me shave it later. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna if you sign up for our Instagram, everyone, because we're gonna film this right. No, we're not gonna do that. But you should get an electric razor to clean the ass, to yeah. shave the ass, shave it up. That, putting a blade to some area that you cannot see. I know so it was it's dangerous. Yeah. So FYI, um, don't take a blade to the ass. No, and uh, we are going to do our YouTube live now. We will do more in the future, um, but we're going to go to Facebook live in the future. We realize YouTube live is a poor choice, so we're hoping that it works. If you log on today and it didn't work, we're really sorry. We should have gone Facebook, but we're hoping that it works. 
it will work. So actually, last thing I want to say, oh, we're, yeah. we're going to start answering sex questions on Facebook Live. We're going to try to do one a week. Um, so if you email us your sex questions, um, we'll try to do it on the air when we can too. But we're also going to start doing it on Facebook Live. So if you're not and a fan of our Facebook, go ahead. And I do want to say we we are getting so many questions at this point. We are going to try to answer all of your questions. It is a bit difficult for us now because. Honestly, if you looked at our at our inbox at shameless sex podcast at gmail dot com, you would be shocked because um, there's no way possible that we could get to all of them. But we will try and we'll do our very best. And we do love each and every one of you. If you um, would do us the kind favor of giving us a five star review on iTunes, we would be so appreciative. We do read those reviews, every single one, and we love you, our listeners. Thank you for tuning in every Tuesday. We'll see you next Tuesday, y'all. Ciao for now. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com.